tomorrow is the first day of spring. Yeah. Anyways, Olympus has come out with an OM1. And with that, they've released a bunch of new software and updates and stuff. And in the OM workspace, there's some great new tools that will allow you to do some neat things if you're trying to photograph the moon. And I'm gonna show you how to use those. And the cool thing about these things is that you don't need an OM1 necessarily in order to take advantage of this stuff. All right, let's get two things out of the way. One, the hat's from China. Two, you don't need a star tracker to do this. As a matter of fact, last night I actually tested this all out, just hand holding the camera, okay? Now I'm using the 1.4X total converter along with the 100 to 400, which is a lot of focal length. And it was actually kind of challenging to point the thing straight up and hold it on the moon, but it's totally doable. So, but for the sake of ease here, I'm gonna use my, Sky, my Skywatcher Adventure Pro just to kind of like, you know, frame it up. All right, now, as you can see, I've actually got the grid going on in here. It just kind of helps me frame this thing up the same way each time we take pictures of it. And we've got the spot metering set right on the moon. If we're out here in the dark, you see it'll just blow right out. So well, let's take that back. And we're just using normal autofocus here. Now let's go into the menu. We're gonna go up to the cog and we're gonna go down to, I think it is Nope, it's C1. I'm gonna go to high settings, okay, into the pro capture mode. We're gonna use 60 frames per second, okay, and then down here, I'm actually gonna increase this, eh, make it like 65. All right, and then just get out of the menu. And go to the super control panel. We got pro capture high set. All right, let's get out of that. I'm gonna reframe just a little bit here. Right there. Come on. There we go. <laughs> Usually. The Usually autofocus is very quick. And we're just gonna press the button down and let it take a bunch of images in Pro Capture High. And we'll do this a couple times, okay? Usually you get about three or 400 images. And then from here, we'll go to OM Workspace. Just do one more here. All right, first off, make sure you have OM Workspace. If you're still using the Olympus Workspace, you will need to update. And what this is going to do is going to bring this new feature right here, which is called Focus Analyzer. So in order to analyze images, the images need to be taken with Pro Capture. And of course, we did this Pro Capture High. Here's a whole bunch of images that I took one night. These are actually just handheld this particular night. And we're going to hit Focus Analyze. And it's actually over here on the left going to break up the images into stacks. You know, like these are, this is each time I press the shutter button. And let's select the second stack here and we're going to analyze this. And it will go through and actually, I just made a mistake. <laughs> so let's hit close here. We analyze this black space, which obviously there's nothing there. So it's not going to really do a great job. So we're going to hit redo. All right. And this time, because it's going to pick the same spot that your autofocus point in the camera was set to originally. And let's go ahead and make it a little bit bigger than the moon itself. It doesn't have to cover the entire moon. You could actually pick a section. And this, this night I was doing it handheld. It'd be easier to do this on a tripod. So let's do the focus analyze once again. And it's done. Now, right here is a slider, so it's going to basically pick the coarseness of the selection. So the the strictest selection set will leave you with five images, all right? And the most lucrative one will just, of course, keep all of them. But they will all be organized from dullest to sharpest. So actually, let's look at 
This is the sharpest image in the stack. And let's go all the way over here and let's look at the blurriest image in the stack. And as you can see, this is quite a bit blurrier. <laughs> so it does a great job. You know, it's this is a nice little way to sort through the images. And so actually, let's go back to this. So what we could do is actually go ahead and star all of these images. And we could do that for all the different images. You know, we just basically go through all these different stacks find the ones that are the sharpest. We'll do focus analyze with each one and I forgot to change this again. Let's let's hit redo here. I'm just really bumbling here tonight. So we'll do the focus analyze. And the focus analysis is it's pretty quick actually. I was surprised at how fast it was considering how many pictures we're going through. And so once again, we're gonna go ahead and select all these and star them. And then once that's done, we could leave the focus analysis section. We could go back here into the menu and we could basically sort by only the pictures that are sharp, okay? And we could actually take these, throw them into another folder and then maybe stack them in yet another piece of software, something like Linkuous or AutoStackert. If you're a PC guy, you'd probably wanna use AutoStackert. LinkUS is a Mac app that you can stack your images in. Or you could just take one of these images and use just this, the one that you think looks the best. And you can see this This was a night I was doing it handheld. And you can actually see the moon just kind of goes up and down and up and down kind of because I'm hand holding this. Now let's go into here. Uh, as you can see, I've already selected a few. Let's go ahead and grab this. I think this this particular night I used a tripod to do this. And I also had made some changes to the Pro Capture, which allowed me to capture 48 most of the time. You know, 48, 27, 32, 48, 41. So a little bit bigger stacks. So let's go ahead and do focus analysis on this. And so we stacked and analyzed. It looks like it says it found four that it liked. But as you can see, this this is a pretty crisp night. Look, look at the detail we have in those craters. And of course we can go back out here and let's let's kind of compare to the worst image. And as you can see, it's a it's a little bit softer. I mean it's we're getting really picky here. This this is all taken on a tripod, so they're going to be closer to the same. But the important thing to note is that the atmosphere, it's going to be rippling and all this stuff. And by selecting the sharpest ones, you, know, you, you, can, you can find the best image that was taken that night, basically. We can go through all of these, actually, and, I, and do them. So after we basically starred all the images that were the sharpest, now what we do is actually moved a bunch of them into this folder right here which i just called filtered and yeah after a few and then from here basically what i did is i came into linkuos and just hit the plus button and we went to that specific filter okay and basically grabbed all of these i grabbed jpeg versions of them we don't really need to do the raw files this would be a little too big and what i like to do so I like to analyze first, and analyzing first will allow me to further sort out images that are the sharpest. And so you hit the analyze button, it'll go through and it'll check and uncheck all of the images that are the sharpest. Then I go back here to the line button, and basically you've got to draw this red box around the moon, okay, because it doesn't take up the entire image and then we hit the align button and it'll actually put all these coordinates in here. The, basically it'll, it'll fine tune the position of each and every single image. And then finally we go in here to the stack button and the one that I kind of settled on liking the most is the, the reject option, all right? And I do double the size of it since, I mean, the moon is pretty small right now because it's a lot farther from Earth than it normally is. And then for reject, I used a 1.7 reject, and then I hit the stack button. And then that gave me 
this stack image right here, which as you can see, it's kind of it's kind of whited out, which is basically a, a setting a black plane, white plane. But from there, we did some deconvolution settings, which I just use the default. And the unmask, I use the default again. Uh, for wavelets, I actually added a couple more wavelets. And as you can see down here, I gradually got steeper and steeper on wavelets. The higher the wavelet number, the more it tends to affect things that are softer to begin with. So like these top wavelets right here, like the first three or four rows would mainly affect areas like this right here, where there's a lot of contrast. And as you get further down the 2.5 and the 5.50 wavelets and higher, what that starts to do is it affects these regions out here um, that are more flatly lit. And then like right here, you can actually see the entire the entire stack of all of my settings, which you know, you can see we did a wavelet transform, we did an unsharp mask, and the deconvolution on top of that, and then a Lucy charge option, and then another unsharp mask, and then another deconvolution. You know, it's just kind of playing around, having fun, really. And then a few more wavelets down here, and then from that point, I just went and did a file uh, save image. All right. Now, if you want to actually see me go through the process of using Linkios, I do have another video, which I'll link to at the end of this video, where you can go and see how to use that. And it's, it's also a, a video about photographing the moon. So from there, okay, we basically opened this image up in Photoshop. And if I actually turn off all of these, this is kind of how it came in. And basically, I just used some adjustment layers to basically get the contrast and black point right. And from there, yeah, that was the, the finished product of the moon, which I think looked pretty good. I mean, basically this image, oops, let's zoom back in here. This image, pixel per pixel, once I doubled it, I think this is a 3,500 by 3,500 pixel image. So it's almost the maximum resolution of the camera, even though, you know, the, the moon is far from filling the frame here. And that's because back here in Linkos, when we did the, uh, the stack option, I selected this doubling of size, which allows us to basically increase the resolution. It's kind of like doing a drizzle basically to the image, you know, which is also what the Olympus cameras do when they do their high res shot mode. So there we go. Yeah. And if you guys are interested in kind of seeing some of my images and following me, you can follow me on Instagram. And of course, hope you like this and subscribe and this was helpful to you.